Hey everybody, Steve here. Today, we're gonna paint like we just don't care. So, stick around for a bit and throw your hands in the air. Here's the scene I'm going to sketch today. It's the back view of this uh, Abbey St. Foy in France. I have sped up the video just slightly, so it's about two times uh, speed. So it's uh, much slower than a lot of the time lapses are, and I think you can see what's going on better. The main thing on this is this is all, this is what I do when I go out and I want to have fun. I don't worry about uh, having everything be real accurate. This is much more playful and enjoyable. And I don't start with any kind of an underdrawing. There's no pencil. I just start drawing and uh, let things fall where they may. For me, if I start with a pencil underdrawing, uh, normally I'll tighten up. And this is, there's nothing about this that's, that's tight. It needs to be loose and fun and uh, just see what happens. Happy accidents. And I think the same thing will happen with you if you go out and just relax and lean into it. This particular technique, and I've been using this, geez, as long as I can remember, back when I was doing storyboards and such like, you're gonna find that, that you don't dread going out and drawing because, uh, you know, the, the looser, and uh, the more often that you do this, you're gonna develop your own style. You're gonna find that it's, this is just plain fun and it's very difficult to make mistakes that, that look like mistakes. You know, you're gonna make mistakes, but you can uh, correct things as you go and hide your boo-boos. And the great thing is that the more that you do this, the funkier uh, your style is gonna become and uh, everybody's gonna be able to say, oh yeah, I, I know who did that. You know, it will instantly be recognizable as something that is your signature style. <laughs> but let me get back to talking about what it is I'm doing here. Uh, I, as you can see the reference there on the lower left, I'm putting in all these different pieces, parts, the towers, the roofs that are uh, angled but I'm not measuring anything. I'm doing everything by eye. There's my little homage to Ian Fennelly. If you're not familiar with Ian's work, I'll put a, a link to him. He's just, he's a wonderful urban sketcher. He does really playful uh, urban sketches, uh, sketches of buildings and old trucks and such. And he, uh, he seems to always put birds uh, in his sketches. So I thought I'd do that for Ian. The window that I'm putting in there, the stained glass window, I really can't tell what it looks like in the uh, in the photo reference. So I just made something up that looked kind of like a stained glass window on the side of a, of a of a church. And I like to add some of this uh, shading by my squiggly lines. My style is um, very loose lines. Uh, I'll go over the lines a few times if I if I need to or if I want to to make it look a little bit looser. It's just part of my style and and the way I think with a pen. And at this point, it's just intuitive. And the more you do it, the more it'll be intuitive for you. And uh, there, I'm putting in some of the. Uh, you know, I think these these roofs are actually stone. I don't think that they have uh, shingles like I'm putting in, but I don't care. <laughs> This is how I, my, I draw my shingles. Another tip, let your lines overlap in places. Not everywhere, but occasionally. And when it comes to these curves, I generally try and do it in one fell swoop. It doesn't matter if the curve is exactly right, as long as it's a curve generally in the right place. Now that top of that uh, curved roof is in the wrong place, and so there you go. I just put drew another line into uh, ignore the first line that I put down. So uh, it just adds to the charm of the sketch and uh, nobody will know that it's not supposed to be there. They'll just figure that it, it's, it's part of the drawing. One of the rules that I heard somewhere along the way is 
uh, for windows is if you can count them easily, then draw that many. But if there's so many that you can't count them, then don't count them. You know, just guesstimate and make it look like there's a lot of windows. Also, part of the fun of this is adding in your own little touches like this, this little open sign that I can imagine the Padre put out there so that uh, people know that they can come in and do their confession or whatever they want to. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm going to burn in hell. I know it. I figure God's got to have a sense of humor, right? I mean, you know, he made avocados. So right about this point, I decide, you know, these monks, they're probably wanting to cash in a little bit on the tourist market. So they've got a coffee shop up in the uh, bell tower. <laughs> so they hung their shingle out for uh, espresso and there's their sign. I mean, you kind of make up little sto stories about this as you go. And uh, hey, they had to find a way to keep the lights on somehow. And of course, right about here, I decided I need to have some kind of event uh, coming up out of this lower area. So I added a little, uh, little pipe for them. It's much more comfortable. But I hope you can see that as this is coming together, it's a real funky style. Um, there's nothing that, that screams architectural <laughs> rendering about it. It's just playful, and sometimes that's exactly what you want when you go out. Don't put that pressure on yourself if you don't want to. And about this point, you know, it's just all been about adding in details. You can stop whenever you want to. I wouldn't have to go any farther than this, but uh, sometimes I get carried away and you know, I just don't want to stop until I feel like uh, I've got everything in that I, I want to say on this. And uh, so I was basically I was having a ball, but we'll be getting to the color here in just a moment. This is basically what it looks like if you're drawing drunk, which I don't recommend, by the way. Naughty. Well, that's about all the damage I can do with a pen. Let's see what we can do with a uh, color. Now I'm going to use a real limited palette. I'm going to use only three colors. And those three colors are Venetian Red, Sodalite Genuine, and last but not least, Cobalt Teal Blue. Now these are all Daniel Smith watercolors. It's uh, just about exclusively all that I work in. And um, I've done up a special little palette where it's just the three colors, Venetian Red, uh, Cobalt Teal Blue, and Sodalite Genuine. So we've got a, a warm, a neutral, and a cool. Okay, now I should say that I'm not going to cover everything. I'm just going to selectively color. And in, most of this is just kind of instinctive as to where I put colors and, and why. So there's no real particular reason why I'm going to be coloring anything the way that I am. Um, just kind of whatever I feel. 
I have no uh, color reference on this. You know, this is just going to be um, where I want everything to uh, to go. So, and there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I do think I want my focus mostly to be in the in the front here. Go ahead and add some of this teal in. I don't mind if they bleed together. In fact, I, I actually want some of that. You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Huh. I definitely want some of that. really, you know, let's just have fun with it. And it's definitely important that you don't cover everything. You want to let uh, some of this fade out. When I demonstrate this for um, my students or for, for different artists, they'll always ask me, how do you decide what goes where? <laughs> and, you know, it's a really valid question. And I would have to say, at some point, it comes down to your artistic choices. You have to decide where you want the eye to be, make those your strongest colors, and um, selectively allow it to fade away. If you do that, you're going to uh, you're going to have something that's artistic and uh, and fun, and especially if you're just starting out doing this, I would really suggest limiting your colors. Don't uh, don't go hog wild with all your colors. Uh, limit it to three or four, or five at the very most, and um, know where you want the focal point to be. Make that your strongest color and everything else can kind of fade away from there. If you do that, you, you won't go too far wrong. Heck, but even if you do, you, you haven't invested too much time in this, <laughs> you know, and you, I'm sure you would have enough time to sit down and, and try it again, using the knowledge that you gained from the first attempt. the sodalate I'm thinking I'll, I'll use either for the, the roof here or for the shadows. Definitely do not uh, stay within the lines on this. You want, you want this sketch to look as loose as the actual drawing part is.
Okay, I've decided uh, that I'm going to add one extra color. I'm going to add this uh, yellow ochre right here. And uh, I'm going to add it just to warm up this, uh, this Venetian red, just a little bit. So, hey, my sketch, my rules, right? It's a perfect example of how art is. You, you have a general idea, but you allow your piece to tell you what it needs. Just want to give it a little, little bit more depth. Just felt a little bit too flat to me. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and do this. I don't want to add it into the blue so much. It's okay if it bleeds in a little, but I do love the idea of bringing some of this down into here, just helping this all to move a little bit. I want to overdose on the color, but I do love me some yellow ochre goes so well with this Venetian red. I'm going to leave that. So much of this, it's just, it's just intuition, you know, where you feel like you want your eye to move. Uh, and I do think I'm going to go ahead and add some color on the sign. Just to call that out a little bit. And the coffee shop sign up here. <laughs> Bring that across a little. I don't think I want the teal to be spattered, but maybe a little of this Soda Light Genuine knocked back. To my eye, it really completes the look of this whole funky style. And, you know, without it, to me, it just seems a little naked. that this is um, dry. I will go back over this with my black liner because these colors are not absolutely transparent. All right, so we've got it all colored. Now it's just a matter of going back over it with a little bit of uh, my pen here. This is a, a medium, so it's a little wider than the original that I did, and this is going to help me to be able to really call out those dark areas that kind of get lost a little bit in, uh, in the color wash. And don't worry about being uh, absolutely right on the line that you've already put down there. This is a very forgiving technique and uh, you can go ahead and, and miss here and there. It's not a big deal. It's just, uh, it's part of the style. But if you don't do this, your, your uh, drawing is gonna look kind of uh, anemic. Don't feel like you have to go over every line, just the ones that were uh, kind of obliterated or if you wanna heavy up the outline a little bit. Okay, real quick, this uh, is the jelly roll that I like to use. And uh, it is opaque and it's water soluble. So if you put it down and you don't really care for it, uh, don't worry about it. You can always lift it back up again. So let's just go in and reinforce some of this. 
Again, I don't put it everywhere, just wherever I feel like it really needs to uh, be separated from what's going on in the background. See, this got that got a little muddy in there, so this is nice to be able to go in and call those out. Don't have to do them all, just kind of where you feel like they're important enough to go back in. And this part is really like every other part of uh, doing this technique. You don't want to do uh, these white lines everywhere. You want to kind of selectively put them in and um, know where it is that you want your um, focus to be and make these white lines more around that area. If you do that and then just leave the outside areas alone, you're going to uh, you're going to end up with a sketch that you really like. Here is the finished sketch. Really don't be afraid to go out and give this a try. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised if you do. And uh, let me know how it goes. The exciting news is I just opened up a Gumroad store where I will be selling this sketch and a lot of the other sketches I do throughout the year. Some of them on YouTube here as tutorials and some just for myself. So if you're interested and would like to own an original, take a moment and check it out. I'm going to close up the studio now. Thanks for stopping by. I hope uh, this helped and I'll see you down the road.